Jesus Christ. I welcome you again for a new session of Catechism Learning. Let's begin our session with a small prayer. Let's join our hands, close our eyes and be in a prayerful mood. Abba Father, we give you thanks for this beautiful day that you have granted us. Thank you for bringing all of us together for this session. Bless each and every one of us. Keep us safe in your mighty palm. We bring to you, O Lord, our parents, teacher, and all our friends who are attending this session. Send your Holy Spirit upon each of us so that whatever we learn be easy for us. We offer this prayer in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So dear friends, how are you all doing? I hope you all are doing good. In our last session, we studied about God's name. How God's name is an adorable name and how we have to pay respect to the name of the Lord. The second chapter, the title itself says, God's name, holy name. We also learned that in our prayer, Our Father, we say, Our Father who art in heaven, holy be your name. That means we consider the name of God as holy and that is how we pay respect to God's name. The second commandment teaches us, You shall not misuse the name of your Lord your God in vain. So in our last class, we studied about the importance of the name of God. And in our today's class, we will be studying how we are not supposed to use the name of God in vain. We also learned about how the name of God is used in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. While referring to the Old Testament, I gave you the example of the burning bush that appeared in front of Moses. So when Moses asked, reveal your name. So the answer given by God was, I am who I am. This teaches us that God's identity itself was his presence. God had a name Yahweh during the Old Testament, but the people of Israel didn't prefer to call him Yahweh because they somewhere felt calling God Yahweh is a disrespectful act. Man has no authority on God. We can only worship God. Moving on to the New Testament, we learned that Jesus coined a new term Father to refer to God. We learned about the term Abba which means Father and the children of Israel called their father as Abba. So Jesus expects all of us to call God as Father, our own Father. We also learned about the salvific and the powerful name of Jesus. Jesus' name is a powerful name. It is a salvific name. In the name of Jesus, a lot of miracles had happened and is still happening. The name of Jesus heals. That is what we see that Saint Peter healed a lame man in the name of Jesus. So the name Jesus itself has a salvific power. This is what we learned in our last class. In our today's class, we are going to learn about how we are not supposed to use God's name in vain. Okay, I'll just tell you in a very simple term. So when we have conversations with our friends, we simply say, oh my God, this happened. 
Oh good Lord, this happened. We are unnecessarily using the name of God, which is not required. But unknowingly, we usually do that. Somewhere, unintentionally, we are committing violation to the second commandment. In your textbook, it is said, where we are supposed to use God's name. Pay respect to God's name in all occasions. Now, when we say occasions, there are a lot of occasions where we use Bible as a source and we do take God's name. For example, any oath ceremony. We take the oath in the name of God. Also, if you would have noticed, in courts, we take the oath in the name of God. Swearing, bearing, mockery, condemnation, irreverence against God is violation of second commandment. So we usually say, oh, I swear, I swear to God, I swear to God. But then, really, are we making real witnesses in the name of God? Is it really required that we need to give our witnesses in the name of God? For little, little things probably, we swear to the name of God. We somewhere do not pay respect to the name of God by doing these acts. Questioning God's providence and accusing God as merciless and unjust are also serious sins. Somewhere in our first chapter, we understood that whatever happens in our life, happens with the will of God. So sometimes when we go through tough situations, we are not expected to call God merciless or to go and blame Him for our difficult situations. Somewhere we will come out of it. But then by calling God merciless, calling Him unjust, we are violating the second commandment given to us. Cursing one's own fellow beings created in God's image is teasing God himself. Of course, each of us, if you look at your siblings, if you look at your parents, if you look at your teachers, your friends, all of us are created in the image and likeness of God. So when you curse or when you say bad words about any of them, you are kind of saying those to God himself. Isn't that paying disrespect to God? Of course it is. So next time, if you curse anybody, please keep this in mind. Moving further, we know that Lord is holy. Also, apart from Lord, whatever is related to Lord is also holy. We are expected to pay respect for Mother Mary and all the saints. Why? Because these are the favorite people of God. When we pray to God, when we pray to Mother Mary, we need to pray with certain respect. We need to understand that these people are the ladder that help us to reach God faster. Respect persons, places, objects dedicated to God. When I say persons, it includes religious people, priests, bishops, and all those people who are involved in the service of God. When I say places, it refers to pilgrim centers, churches, shrines, and objects, the altar, and everything that is related to God is holy. We need to pay special respect to the to Holy Bible because it has the word of God. And it is through Holy Bible that God speaks to us. So we are supposed to pay respect to the word of God. Treating the persons dedicated to God badly, improper behavior at the holy places, making holy things unholy are signs against the second commandment. Yes. Now this refers how we behave in the church. Sometimes we go into the church, we start talking, we start misbehaving. All this are counted under the violation of the second commandment. We are supposed to treat the people who are dedicated to God kindly, treat them with respect. We are also supposed to be well behaved in holy places. When we are attending Holy Mass, we are expected to attend Holy Mass with great reverence. 
So God's name is always holy. If I ask you, what are your names? You will see. Your name, your friend's name, if he is a Christian, everybody has a similar pattern in the name. So whenever your friend comes and tells you that his name is Peter or his name is John or his name is Precious, then you know that this person might be Christian. How do you get to know that? That is because we Christians have a certain pattern of naming. So if you just think about your name, you will understand that your name must be also falling under this pattern of Christianity. We see God himself naming a lot many people. For example, Abraham was named Abraham by God. Jacob was named Israel. Many other examples are there. If you take your baptismal name, you will understand either your name is somewhere related to the characters in the Holy Bible or related to any of the saints. That is how our parents have named us. This also reminds us that our name is coming from Christianity. This helps us to build the Christian values within ourselves. Certain names refer to God's goodness or divine mysteries. So if your name is John, somewhere you are expected to be a model like John. If your name is Peter, somewhere you are expected to be like a rock, to be like Peter. The second commandment reminds us to show reverence to God's name on all occasions in our daily life. Yes, God's name is holy, as I said earlier. So, it is through the second commandment that we understand why we are given Christian names. Also, church condemns uh, giving children names which are against Christianity. So, the second commandment reminds us constantly that we are supposed to pay respect to the name of God and also to be a model according to the names which are given to us. So, the word of God for today is anything you ask from Father in my name, he will grant it. John chapter 16 verse 23. We also need to remember that just as God's name is holy, Jesus' name is also holy. So I'll give you a quick summary to whatever we studied today. We learned about the usage of God's name, that we are supposed to pay respect to God's name in all occasion, whether it is any oath ceremony or if it is marriage or if it is whether in the court, we are supposed to pay respect to the name of God. Swearing, bearing, mocking, the name of God all violates the second commandment. We are not expected to take God's name for silly little things. Questioning God's providence and accusing God as merciless is also violating the second commandment. Cursing somebody who is also made in the form, in the likeness and image of God is again, mocking God is again, disrespecting God himself. Then we learned that just as God, we are supposed to pay respect to everything that is related to God. Now that has Mother Mary and all the saints. It also includes people, places, objects that are dedicated to God. We also understand why the Christian names are important and why we all are given Christian names. This is to remind us about our religion. So, I have a task for you all. According to your name, whatever your name is, find the saint and learn the biography of the saint. This will help you to lead a life according to the saint. Let's wind up today's class with a small prayer. O oh Lord, give us the grace to understand and experience the power of your holy name. On that note, I would like to conclude this session. Thank you.